We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton. That is Jerem Jordan. And we are about to add a third member to this conversation. BYU basketball assistant coach Cody Feger joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline via Zoom. Cody, great to have you back on the show. How are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate you guys having me. Man, we can uh, literally count the hours before BYU basketball tips off the season. Uh, It's been just such a strange long offseason based on what happened uh, in March. But you and the staff have been very outspoken about feeling good about this wildly different roster picking up where your program left off last season. Why do you feel confident in this team despite losing so many stars? Um, I feel really confident in this team because we got such great kids that work hard every day. You know, we've got some returners uh, with Alex Bartosello, uh, Trevin Nell, Colby Lee. We got some guys that, you know, did a couple things last year that are ready to step up for the leadership. And then we got Matt Harms, who's produced. We've got Brandon Averett, who's produced. Um, we got a bunch of guys, a um, bunch of new guys that have produced where they were before. So um, we're excited. We've been just chomping at the bit since March uh, to play somebody else, to play play some, you know, ever since the, you know, the St. Mary's game, we're ready to play somebody else. And uh, we've been going hard since July, so it, we're, we're excited about this group, this roster. We've called it a hodgepodge of talent, if you will, and we're excited to see how it coalesces. You guys wear the best locker room in America shirts. It's awesome. How is this team noticeably different from last year, and how will we see that manifest on the court? Well, we're a little bit bigger, right? A we've, little bit? Uh, <laughs> we've, got some, we've got some size where Colby Lee was you know, the tallest guy for – most of the year last year, and now now we've added, you know, Matt Harms, Big Rich, Harward, and, um, you know, Gavin Baxter was out for most of the year. So we got those three guys that are that are in, uh, which is way different. Um, and then we've got, you know, a bunch of new guys. <laughs> you know, we're, we're subbing out, you know, TJ Hawes for Brandon Averett. There's a little size difference there, but uh, just a completely different game between those two guys. Um I think our offensive rebounding should go up this year. Um, that should be probably our main main thing offensively. It's going to be a little bit different is that we're going to be going to the glass a little bit more, have a little bit more size. Last year it was mostly, you know, Yoli, Kolb, and, uh, you know, Dalt and Zach, those, those four guys really. Let's discuss how much the offense and defensive schemes have changed from last year to this year. How much time have you spent implementing new things, or is it still the similar base just with uh, a few wrinkles? How, how have you done this? Yeah, so offensively, um, we're, we're kind of using the same base offensively. We're just tweaking, tweaking a couple things, like you said. Hey, we're going to – uh, with our same similar base and offense, we're going to just do what Matt Matt Harms does really well. We're going to post him in different ways than we did Yoli, things like that. Same with Alex Barcelo. We're going to get him in different ball screen situations, and same with Brandon Averett. That's kind of the main main thing. But we're not we're not changing um, a ton of things. Now defensively, we are changing how we're guarding ball screens, this and that. But it's still it's still going to be the same goal where we're going to be talking about transition defense every game, and you know. Um, rebounding, th- those kind of the same things. So we're not we're not changing too much, just a couple tweaks. The zig for all of basketball at any level has been, oh, bigs are sort of dinosaurs. They're kind of going away, right? So how how do you in- how do you incorporate and suddenly be the the everyone zig that way, but maybe zag with some of the size to your advantage, whether it's be whether it's with rebounding. Yet you have to defend pick and rolls. Yeah, no, no question. Like. I mean, you look at what everybody wants in the NBA and this or that right now is can everybody guard a ball screen? Can you switch on to whoever? So we're, we're still working with that same stuff with our bigs every single day and making sure they can do that. Um, but if you take a look at a team like Gonzaga, they're playing with two bigs all the time, right? Every year that they're playing with two bigs that can, that can switch one through five and then they can also post you down low. So... Um, things they 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 take advantage of is transition uh, rim running, and um, you know uh, throwing it into the post and trying to get to the free throw line. So that's that's some of the similar things that we're we're kind of using also with our with our bigs that are going to be playing a little bit different than last year where we had Connor Harding at the four, you know Zach Selius at the four, you know just it's just going to be way different. Jake Toulson was playing the four sometimes last year. 
Is there any combination of those four bigs that you you uh, can go with, or does it are there certain pairings that are better than others, or could we see any of those four, uh, you know, two at a time on the court at, at any point? Really, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of hodgepodge. It's just who's playing the best and who's giving us the most at at that point right now, and. You know, Caleb Lohner's playing a lot of that that position too, and mm. Gideon George. I mean, there's so many guys that we got just such a roster where we could put all these guys in different different spots. So it's been really fun to kind of figure out. How close are you to naming a starting five at this point? Uh, I think Coach Pope's a little bit, you know, closer than we are, um, as some of us on the staff, but. Um, we're close. We're close. These guys are working hard. It's it's awesome. It, it's a fun group. We've got, you know, 16 guys that are can come in and make plays for us right now. It's it's a fun group. Go ahead and just tell us starting five, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to reveal that. That's that's why he's hiding the whiteboard, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, exactly. oh, I get it. Yeah. Everything's closed off. Yeah. So the the pro of that, that versatility and having a deep roster is you have all kinds of options, right? Which is awesome. The con is sort of making sure that everyone, the culture is good enough, the best locker room in America is good enough, right, to where everyone's happy even if maybe their role is a, a little different or a little less than what they were hoping. How's that development going? Oh, it's been great. We, I mean, that's something we talk about every single day. You know, we, we have scrimmages. We have this and that. We'll, we'll sit guys down. We, we, take a, um, we take a lot of time talking about that with our team because it's a huge deal um because this game's bigger bigger than just you right and and uh all these guys say they want to win and um it, it's it's something that we talk about every single day with our players and as a staff just because it's that important because you know we one guy can sour our locker room or this and that so it's just an important thing for us in this program the university recently announced that there will only be coaches and players families at home games in the marriott center so how that means the, Cody will have tickets for us. That's what I mean. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> How will the flow of the game and the atmosphere change because of the limited fans? The, the Marriott Center Magic could certainly be a little bit different this year. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be different. Our bench is just going to have to be huge this year. Like our bench is going to have, you know, you look at some of those NBA benches with the Lakers and everybody their their benches are going crazy and talking and yelling the whole time and that's just going to be the biggest thing um for for our team this year is that you know right now during practice we're even having our team uh be on the sidelines if they're not in and they're going to be talk they're talking the whole time right now so we're kind of practicing that stuff right now because that's that's such an important piece for for this is um is that our our players are talking because even as a staff right now we're out there with our masks and these guys can hardly hear us. So just our bench is just going to be a huge, huge deal this year. I assume like football, you're going to have to coach with a mask on. Is that the case? Yeah, that's that's what I'm hearing. That's the protocols right now is that we're going to have to have the masks. And it's it's full go right now with that. Are you, are you going gator? Because listen, you're on TV you're, or you have to have the around your ear. I mean, style matters too. Yet you got to be safe. Okay. <laughs> Traditional. Yep. Yep, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I try to make it really, really simple and easy, and I wash it so it smells good and it works. <laughs> That's important. I think we've yes. all learned that about yes. the masks. Well, wash your masks, yes, please, ladies regularly. and gentlemen. Yeah. Let's ask you about the NCAA tournament and the announcement of a bubble in one location, probably in the state of Indiana, around Indianapolis. How do you feel about a bubble scenario for the NCAA tournament and – Maybe it levels the playing field ultimately. What do you think? I'm excited. You know, I haven't read too much about it, honestly, but but I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Is it going to be similar to the NBA? Are they going to have, I mean, how many teams are they going to allow? Are they going to allow 64 teams in a bubble? I mean, that's, that's not going to be easy. Um, I just wonder how, exactly how they're going to do it. You know, are they going to have, like you said, are they going to use like Indiana? Are they going to use Butler? Are they going to use another team? another team where they're trying to have a bunch of games at once. I'm, I'm just really interested, interested to see how, how they're going to do this. Next week's going to be busy. Three games in four days. Westminster, 
and New Orleans and Utah Valley, and then two big games in Connecticut, uh, USC, and then potentially UConn or, or Vanderbilt, right? What's needed for this team in the next six days to be ready for the season? Um, is just to, like, we've talked about the opponents. We've watched what they're doing. Um, for us, it's just we're just focusing on ourselves the most right now. Like, are we doing our stuff the exact right way? You know, because, like you said, there's six games and – in 10 days, really, at the end of the day. And really, we're just taking a step back and make it, making sure we're doing the right stuff as a, as a, as a team because it's going to be hard to scout, you know, with so many one-day turnarounds. Um, so we're taking care of ourselves and making sure that we're just getting better at what we do at a high level every day. Coach, we appreciate the time. Great to catch up with you. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for those six games in 10 days. BYU tipping off the season next week. And maybe you coaches should have a shooting contest to decide who washes the masks. Just putting it out there. I like it. Let's do it. All right. Thanks, Cody.